Good morning. I'm Russell Myers, CEO of Midland Health, and this is our coronavirus daily update for Wednesday, April 29th. Uh, this morning, <clears throat> I'll start with numbers. We have uh, over 26,000 confirmed cases in the state of Texas now, 690 deaths, 75 confirmed cases in Midland, and yesterday, I'm, I'm sorry to announce that we had our sixth death. Uh, an 80-year-old male who had been a resident of Midland Medical Lodge and died in the hospital yesterday. So that's six deaths in Midland County so far. Four of those have been associated with the Midland Medical Lodge outbreak. Numbers from the hospital, we have a census today of 128, uh, 10 patients in critical care. We have four patients in the COVID critical care unit and five in the med surge unit associated with COVID for a total of nine with four of those being positive. Uh, the emergency department saw 101 patients yesterday. We have seven patients on the uh, The uh, I have a couple of announcements to make. Last night, we, we began a program led by volunteer physicians from Premier Physicians Group uh, to do some screening with, with disadvantaged um, uh, consumers in our community and with the homeless. Uh, last night we did screenings uh, in the evening around the dinner hour at Breaking Bread Soup Kitchen. Uh, our physicians are also working with uh, homeless advocates on a program to do some screening at the food bank in Phoenix, and we'll have more to say about that in the future. Uh, but that's a population we've, we've been talking about for a while and the need to, to reach out to them. Uh, should, uh, for the most part, the people who come to the, the soup kitchen have their own transportation, so should any of them uh, require testing after they've been screened, uh, we'll make appointments for them at our testing center and, and expect them to get there on their own. I know there's some further discussion about people uh, without transportation who are in the, the even uh, more chronic homeless population and uh, those uh, conversations in the works to figure out how best to serve uh, those folks. Uh, um, let's see. One of the things we'd like to continue to encourage uh, is the donation of plasma uh, by people who have had uh, the COVID-19 virus and have recovered uh, and have had an extended recovery period. Um, there's been a variety of information out about that. What we've uh, determined as of yesterday is that the blood bank will accept uh, patients who have had a recovery and have a positive antibody test, even if they never had a positive COVID a PCR test. Uh, and so uh, should you have an interest, believe you qualify, uh, I would encourage you to call 68NURSE. You can get information there. You can call or contact by talent. Also, if you're interested in antibody testing, uh, we've talked about that some this week. Uh, it is newly available to us at the hospital through our direct access testing program. Uh, and you can contact our direct access folks if you are interested in an antibody test, uh, the number at the main campus is 221-2911. At the west campus, it's 221-3010. Please call them uh, and discuss that. Uh, if you want an appointment to get an antibody test, uh, you may have to pay for that out of pocket or your insurance may cover it. Uh, that can be discussed when you call. Uh, these uh, these conferences daily, uh, we're, we're reaching the end of our daily schedule now. Uh, this is the last, uh, today will be the last of the daily uh, Facebook Lives and press conferences. We're going to shift beginning next week to a Mondays only schedule, so Monday mornings, and I believe we're going to move that back to 10 a.m. Uh, to give ourselves a little bit more time to accumulate information from the weekend and, and get the day started. So. Uh, after today, the hospital's solo press conferences and Facebook Live events will occur Monday mornings at 10 a.m. until further notice. We will continue to participate with the Unified Command Team. Uh, the mayor uh, sets the schedule for those meetings, and as those are scheduled, uh, certainly there's one tomorrow. As they're scheduled in the future, we will continue to participate in those meetings. So uh, no solo Facebook Live conference from the hospital on Friday. Uh, we'll have the next one on Monday morning at 10 a.m. and regularly on Monday mornings going forward. I believe that's all that I have for this morning, uh, and I'll be happy to take questions. 
We have a question from Facebook. Do you know how much the antibody test costs if insurance doesn't cover it? Uh, let's see. I believe we're charging $50 for the test. Uh, if you get it through our direct access testing program, that's a $50 charge. We have a question from Sammy Still from Newswest 9. Why have you guys decided to open the antibody testing slash plasma donation to people who have never officially tested positive? What changed your mind? Well, it's not our change. That's a, those are the rules that are published by, by Vitalant, the blood bank, that actually uh, captures and stores the plasma. So we've, we've interacted with them yesterday. Our initial impression was that they were not going to accept uh, donations from folks who had not tested positive for the virus, uh, but they gave us a lengthy list of, of acceptable antibody testing sites that they will, will use. Uh, I think if a patient has a question about their qualifications, they should contact my talent directly. But th those rules came directly from them. We have a question from Danny Barrera. How difficult is it to test the homeless? Well, we're going to find out. I, we're, we're not intending to test the homeless uh, in any broad way. What we're doing is offering screening uh, at the soup kitchen and later at the food bank for people who are coming there for, for food, for meals or for, for food supplies. Uh, many of those people are homeless, certainly not all of them. Um, most of them are economically disadvantaged, either chronically or, or newly disadvantaged by the, the challenging economic environment we have now. And we, we uh, are concerned that that may be a population that is not readily accessing the healthcare system in any way. And so we're going to have screeners at those sites uh, a couple of times a week uh, and see what comes of it. If patients, uh, if, if there are people who are screened and appear to have symptoms or otherwise need to be tested, uh, then we'll ask them to go and be tested. Uh, that won't cost them anything, so that, that part will not be difficult, but we, we can't control what these folks do. If they choose not to be tested, they, they uh, don't have to. I think we're most concerned about the chronically homeless, uh, not the people who have uh, been uh, newly disenfranchised and perhaps are living in their cars or have transportation at least, but the folks who, who li regularly live in our community uh, out in the open, uh, and, and perhaps are, are less accustomed to interacting with the healthcare system, uh, that's going to be a work in progress. And we are working with community advocates who work re regu regularly with the homeless uh, to try to, to find inroads to, to gaining the trust of that population uh, and assuring that our screeners can talk to them uh, and that the testing can go forward if it's needed. Uh, it's very much a, a new program, so it, I'm sure it will evolve a good deal over the next two or three weeks as we figure out what works the best. We have another question from Sammy. How many people have donated plasma so far? Um, yeah, we, we think it's in the in the low teens. Uh, in all likelihood, I don't have an exact number, but we're aware that there's a there is some stored plasma that's been donated locally uh, that hasn't yet been used. So, 10, 12, 14, somewhere in that range. We have a question from Melissa Beach from News Last Nine. How many people were tested at the Breaking Bread Soup Kitchen? Are you tracking them separately from other cases? You know, I, I hope to have uh, better information about that when we talk tomorrow. All, all I know is that we began uh, the screening. It happened last evening, and we haven't gotten an update for the, from the people who, who screened on site last night. So I'll be able to tell you some tomorrow about how many people they screened, whether anyone was sent for testing or not, uh, those, that sort of information. But as of this moment, I just don't have it. Oh, okay. Well, Dr. Wilson has it, and he's, he's whispering off camera that, that we saw 60 people last night at the Breaking Bread Soup Kitchen uh, screened those 60, and no one was sent for testing last night. Um, so as the, uh, as the rest of the schedule unfolds, as we determine um, when we're going, going to be doing these screenings at the food bank, uh, we'll talk to you in more detail about the rest of the plans. Thanks, Larry. We have a question from Caitlin Randall at the MRT. Um, one, you've already addressed about how many were screened last night. And then a follow-up, 
do you have the timeline for expanding screening to those who are chronically homeless? I don't. We we have a conversation ongoing with some local homeless advocates. We we had an initial plan to to try to reach those those folks, but uh, we're redirected by people who who know that population better, uh, and we're we're working on suggestions that they may have for how best to reach that population. As of now, I don't think we've firmed up a plan for how to do that, um, so that's still to be determined. Give me one moment. Um, we have some questions on Facebook, but I just lost my feed, so I'll pull it up on my phone. So sorry. All right. One second. Okay. Are you, sh how sure are you that antibodies are not contaminated? Are you able to test it effectively? Uh, contamination, I don't, I, I think we're, you know, they're, these are standard blood draws. So, so uh, contamination shouldn't be a question if the draws are done correctly. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the Probably nature of the question. Oh, yeah, yeah. If the, if the question's really about, about the sensitivity of the test, uh, they're, they're limited. Uh, essentially, I mean, this is my, my lay way of thinking about it. These are, these are sort of pass-fail tests. Uh, either you have the presence of antibodies in your system or you do not. Uh, we're, we're not certain uh, exactly what the results will mean, uh, whether the, the person could potentially still be shedding virus, whether they have an adequate level of antibodies in their blood to really consider themselves immune. Those are questions the test doesn't answer. Uh, what it does answer is whether there are antibodies present or not. And that's, that's about as far as it goes. I believe you've already addressed this question, but I'll ask it just in case you have anything further to add. Um, how confident are you about the accuracy of the antibody testing? Well, I think the high, the, uh, what I, what's been described to me is that these tests are a high quality test. So the accuracy of them is not much in question. Uh, it's what the results, the accurate results actually mean uh, in terms of the patient's level of immunity uh, and how their behavior should change uh, going forward. What we do know, uh, according to the blood bank, is that a positive antibody test from, from any number of uh, labs, about a dozen on the list that, that I saw yesterday, uh, those positive antibody tests will qualify someone as a plasma donor. Uh, if they don't, if they're not otherwise disqualified for other reasons. So uh, that's the one element of value that we know it has. Is the antibody testing for MMH employees or open to the public? Uh, we've we've uh, marketed it to our employees first, uh, and there's been a significant level of interest. We also, at the same time, communicated with our physicians so that they can talk to their patients and, and send them for testing if, they, if they're if they interested. But we will accept uh, patients from the community. Uh, it does not require an order. You can contact one of our direct access testing sites, make an appointment, and they will test you if, you're, if you uh, are willing to pay for it uh, or if your insurance covers it. Is the blood draw? Is it a blood draw or a rapid finger stick test? And can you repeat the numbers to call for testing? It's a regular blood draw. It's a regular blood draw, as you would find with uh, with other types of blood testing. It's not a finger stick. Uh, the phone numbers to call are two two one three zero one zero or two two one two nine one one. How long does it put that up on our? our Facebook page. I'm yes, we'll nice. post it shortly. How long does it take to get results back from the antibody testing? Well, we don't know that for sure. We haven't done it in enough quantity to say. And, and just like the, the regular virus testing, uh, that uh, turnaround time is going to vary as people become aware of the availability of testing and, and come to get it in larger numbers. We're going to begin to see backlogs in the labs in all likelihood. Uh, so as of now, we don't really know. It's a send out test. So certainly no faster than a couple of days. Uh, and depending on the volume that they have to see, uh, we'll, we'll establish a, a turnaround time once we do more of these and, and uh, see how the labs perform. We, we just don't know at this point.
if the antibody test is positive, can you donate plasma? Uh, generally, uh, as I understand it, yes. There are some other qualifications that you'll have to talk to the to the uh, my talent folks about, but but generally, yes. If you have a positive antibody test from a reputable lab that has been um, sanctioned by Vitalant, then you would be able to donate plasma. It looks like that's all the questions that we have. We did have some comments regarding the schedule and if we'll be live tomorrow with Unified Command or not. Yes, uh, definitely. We'll have a Unified Command team uh, briefing tomorrow at nine. Uh, that will go on. Uh, just as has been scheduled uh, over the past several weeks. So I'll be here along with the rest of the Unified Command Team tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, we will not have the hospital-only briefing this Friday. We will have the next hospital-only briefing Monday morning at 10 a.m. We'll, we'll make it an hour later um, to accommodate our schedule here in the hospital. And going forward, we'll expect to do these just on Monday mornings, the hospital-only session just on Monday mornings. And then, of course, we will participate in the Unified Command Team briefings whenever they happen, as scheduled by the city. Uh, so we will see you back here uh, with the hospital-only briefing Monday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be with the Unified Command Team tomorrow, Thursday morning, 9 a.m. If there's no further questions, uh, I'll say thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.